anyway, sorry guys. Enough of that. Hopefully, we can just start the 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 video from right here, right and here? not include any of that prior conversation. Leave all of that out. All right. I don't think our listeners want to hear about my bathroom habits. I got you. I will leave it out. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you guys. Uh, seen the trailer now for 39 how Ooh. are you guys feeling are you excited for it are you i've been excited for it yeah i'm even more excited for i was it. never not excited for it yeah i was gonna say Fair. like the minute that i saw like the cast spoilers like i was like oh this is gonna be a great because we've been asking for a season like this for a while like we've been talking about how great it would be to have a season like invasion of the champs but without the invasion of the champs you know what i mean like yeah. just a season of non winners and let's just have a new winner. I would like Jacob to be here right now so I could ask him, is this the first time other than the very first challenge where there were no champions on it that season? I mean, they oh. still shoehorn them in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but they're not really part of the season. They're just mercenaries. But you know what I mean? Like there's no one officially on the cast that is a, champ. a champion other than the very first season of the challenge. Right. Yeah, that's an I, interesting. I if you know that, know. Well, write yeah. into us. Let yeah. us know because I'm curious about that, and I don't have time to do that kind of research. Yeah, but we'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have to find out for sure because that is actually interesting. Anyways, Josh, how are you, buddy? Yeah. It's been a minute. It has been a minute. I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, better now. <laughs> <laughs> um, how was uh, how was Seattle last weekend? Um, so that got delayed. We ended up staying, and then we're going to go to the 49ers Seahawks game in, uh, in uh, November, I think it is. Nice. nice. So quick question, since we're talking about football, and this is something Tony ah. won't ignore. He might want to look at camera for this one. Are you guys going to watch the Falcons Jaguars game? Because it's going to be like the to uh, Toy Story adaptation to it. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. That's going to be this Sunday. Yeah. I'm more apt to watch it, but still probably won't. If it's cool, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to do my fucking part and get up at 630 in the morning to turn it on. If it's oh, then good, I'm definitely not doing it. Well, that's West Coast time. So that's 1030 in the morning. 10 your, your time. Your yeah. time. But I still don't want to do it. Well, if it's, <laughs> if it's actually any good, I will let you know. Like Perfect. if all of a sudden if Buzz Lightyear catches a 60 yard touchdown pass, I'll be like, Did you, it's pretty cool. You want to check it out? Yeah. I'll wait for your review. I feel like a fucking loser talking about this now. Like I'm excited about Toy Story Falcons football. Well, I just I literally just keep getting distracted because like right in my line of view of the camera and everything is our cat. Oh, curl up on the top like of the cushion. Curling up on the top of the cushion of like the couch that the dog usually sleeps on. And so I'm just like, oh, I wonder how long this is gonna last. <laughs> he looks pretty comfy, honestly. He does. He I'm kind of jelly. Yeah, like that's a that's a dope little spot. Anyway. Um, Sorry, I was distracted. I was like, I don't even know what you guys were talking about because I was over here watching the cat. <laughs> okay, let me. Um, That's okay. I was the one who sent Rick the uh, the thing about the Toy Story thing. Oh, were you? With football on Instagram. We talked about it like, what, like a week ago, I think? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, no, it was longer than that because like I literally read about it in the time and then i saw the message come through it was within like two minutes of when i first learned about it and mm -hmm. we started talking about it um but it that was like two or three weeks i was gonna say ago. yeah that was a couple of weeks it ago was like, you got all excited and you came out and told me you were like oh my god yeah i'm <laughs> fucking stoked i'm sorry i know the viewers hate that i look down at my phone but once again <laughs> notes and i want to get my battery setting so it doesn't just turn off every 20 seconds oh my gosh you know what i mean okay yeah. there we go notes drives me nuts eventually i'm gonna invest in a stand right here so i can just kind of glance over and so look. it looks like you're still looking at the camera but yeah, you're not <laughs> exactly i'm reading my notes <laughs> just Fuck get a yeah. little clip thing right there that's just till we get the money to get a teleprompter oh yeah yeah you'll need to get like an ipad stand yeah for old people vision reasons there fact exactly dude. great point I'm, because it would be we'd be like <laughs> trying to uh, read it <laughs> give me my readers Karina. right <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh man anyway um how, how's how, how's everybody doing yeah tony how are you doing buddy yeah i know you've you're back into the flow of work again after taking that time off what you've been back about six weeks now or so kind of i was off 
from last Wednesday to I go back Tuesday, um, my foot's all screwed up. So I was put off work to keep it elevated and stay off of it, which yeah, oh, no. is two things that I don't like doing. Um, oh, I don't and you got like, two kids. You got two kids. Well, yeah, and, 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 and I don't like being stationary and not being able to do things. Yeah. And when I sarcastically said, yeah, right, it was because I realized you have a three year old son that's getting close <laughs> to turning four soon. Yeah. And you've got a one year old baby girl who's probably just power sliding all over the floor. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's starting to walk now. And then, yeah, Malcolm will be three in December. So oh, three in December. They're sorry. like it's almost to the point where they're both running in opposite directions. I saw the one, uh, the one where they were looking out the window at you. That was such a cute yeah. photo, dude. I fucking loved it so much. Yeah, I had just gone to the store or something, and when I came back, like as I pulled in the driveway before I backed up into my spot, I looked in the window, and they were both like Aubrey was very clearly trying to climb over the like kid table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I just sort of waited to see what would happen because I saw that Sarah was right there, and then yeah, she like pulled herself across the table to get up into the window ledge. Yeah. Oh shit. Um, well, really quick, actually, speaking of of babies, uh, today is uh, September 29th. And we found out today that Wes and Amanda yeah, had their baby. That's right. Had their baby. Little baby. Little baby. Girl. Lucy, Jean. Lucy. Lucy Jean. So cute. You, but no, super congrats to, to Wes. That cute, that picture was so cute. Like the minute I saw yeah. it, I was like, oh, my God, Wes is a dad. Can you imagine like, how spoiled that baby is going to be? Oh my God. The funny thing is, is our guest tomorrow picked tomorrow's date because that was their original due date. Oh, how funny. Oh, wow. That's funny. Yeah, That's we, have a, a- we have a very special guest tomorrow that yeah. we will be interviewing the day after we record this recap. So we'll probably be, be out in the next couple few weeks. Yeah, it'll be out in the next few weeks. We're couple we're, few, sorry, couple few. <laughs> just <laughs> maybe roll add with those it. together. I don't know. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. No, we'll um, we've we've actually got a couple interviews um done, ready, for, getting ready for you guys, and then you know a couple that we've got planned coming up. Um, so getting back into the interviews oh. and stuff. Yeah. So trying you're just gonna have to beep out their names um not edit it but just beep it out you know your little eep, you know what i mean but it sounds better than that um talk to <laughs> trying to get that lined up <laughs> and we're reaching out to trying to get him <laughs> and then really trying to get <laughs> and <laughs> like those are the ones that we're gonna really try to get and they're gonna obviously run into 39 I'm excited. It's it's if we can get this going right, it's going to be a really nice run for the next three months, four months, you know, and especially if we can figure out our timing. Yeah, it'll be fun. Anyways, let's get past this. Let's get on to the real reason we're here unless you have. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. I almost forgot. Yeah. One. Go ahead. You go first and then I'll go. Uh, anyway, um, I don't even know how to transition into this now, but transitions. you know, I wanted to let Tony talk about his podcast, like I said at the beginning. Yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so <laughs> you're you're doing a podcast. Why don't you tell us about the podcast you're doing with Jacob? I, like, <laughs> sorry, Rick asshole. killed my whole fucking <laughs> flow, my asshole. whole vibe by was, jumping no, in with his shit. Was, <laughs> it was a seamless transition. It was phenomenal. You know what? When people look for podcasts, it's not about quantity. It's about quality. And that's where we really don't deliver is my ability to create transitions. <laughs> Speaking of surviving Rick's transitions, uh, we're doing a podcast recapping Survivor. Uh, me and Challenge Historian Jacob. Uh, it is called Survivor Historian, and it's going to be on his channel. I think we're recording this weekend to have it out before um, next week's episode. And then we're just we're just right now trying to hammer out when we record. Um, so that we can do a quick turnaround and then also so that we're not like bumping up against ours. Ideally, I think we're going to be recording the same night and I'm just going to power through and do like double the recordings. Oh, are you going to be doing it before or after? Before. Oh, okay. uh, very before. I was like, dang, that's that's a really late night. <laughs> we have a we have a shorter um, time difference than I do for this one. So it's only yeah. two hours. 
so we figure that we can pretty easily record before this and be done in enough time. The only downside is now Survivor's 90 minutes, which is great for Survivor. But then that means I've got like two and a half hours of rewatching for note taking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. All in one night. Especially because 39 is going to start. Once it's back on MTV, you're probably going to have 90 minute episodes there, too. <laughs> yeah. So it's Wednesday night Survivor and Amazing Race. Thursday night, the challenge. And then I'm either going to be able to rewatch Survivor on Thursday before the challenge or just power through it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fun. We did the first episode. We did like a preseason um, rundown of the cast just based on the Entertainment Weekly bios and everything else. Um, about three hours, so on par for um, our recordings. Yeah. But then we're going to try to knock it down to about like 45 minutes to an hour for the the actual recaps, just kind of more bite size. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun the first time around. We did a lot of like how we got into Survivor and like new era versus old school and then kind of got into the bios. So now that we've got that all out of the way, it flows a lot nicer into a, a regular old recap nice i like it that's awesome dude i'm excited for it heck yeah i'm actually planning because i've got the uh technically i've got two more days off from work but it's i took five days off in total um so i actually want to go back and watch uh survivor now that it's on paramount so i don't have to watch it with yeah. the commercials yeah and try to get through it in like probably 60 to 70 minutes instead of the 90 minutes with ads. I don't know. I just feel like I can enjoy it more when that we, now that I know you're carrying the torch over there with challenge historian and giving it yep. to us. And I'll actually understand what's going on instead of trying to like give my take, which is completely nonsense. Does it? Yeah. It you know what doesn't I mean? Apply. We don't know enough to be doing that. So, <laughs> um, but no, that's awesome, dude. I'm actually really excited and that's super cool. I love that you're getting to do this. The Survivor Project, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and with the historian, like, that's awesome. He's a really awesome guy. He's an awesome podcaster. So I think Absolutely. that's really cool. I'm really excited for you guys. You're branching out with my mortal enemy. Yep. <laughs> Josh feels betrayed, but he'll I do with a it. little bit. <laughs> oh, well, I get to talk Survivor. Yeah, exactly, dude. You're so passionate yeah, about it. And it's it's and, like the perfect situation, you know, like, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. And it gives you that outlet, too, because I know how passionate you are about Survivor. And because of Survivor, you became a challenge fan. Yeah. So without that, yeah. you're not even here in the first place. You exactly. know what I mean? Well, so. yeah. And we kind of cross on that because I started watching the challenge because Jay came over from Survivor. And Jacob started watching Survivor because Jay came over to the challenge. That's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. Dude, you know and honestly, the more I've been watching this season, I want to go back and watch Jay's season with Michaela. And then I want to watch the it's one where so she good. came back. Which one? I forget which one that Game was. Changers. It was. Game Changers. That's right. Yeah. So it's the, the next season. Yeah. And kind of catch up with like maybe the last like 10 to 15 seasons instead of trying to give myself the daunting task of like starting at one one and trying it's, to watch through because it's just it's, it's so, so much it's so much yeah um but dude i'm so excited for you guys and obviously like we said we'll have everything linked below yeah um and of course we're gonna have challenge historian back to hopefully recap either an episode of 39 or all stars four or, or both who yeah. knows, we'll see what happens. Maybe. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to plan. I think we've out. had him on like for every season since the first time we had him on pretty close. I think so. Yeah. 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 He's like Alex. He's like, like three quarter season reporter. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> um, Speaking of one of our returning guests and I'm going to reach out to you here soon is uh, Malik from LWC because yeah. we need to get the cast breakdown for 39 going. Yes. Um, and I freaking love recapping or cast breakdown or literally anything. I love sitting and talking with Malik. Oh, yeah. He's fun. Dude, he's he's so a lot funny. of fun. Yeah, he's so funny. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, and Jordan's only going to be on this season for like. 10 minutes so he won't have too much to rant about yeah. up front but we'll see what happens 
Um, <laughs> I'm sure we will still yeah. get a Jordan rant. I am so sorry. I just happened to look over and I want you to see what's in Ivan's cat bag. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I saw great. it earlier and I can't, I can't, I keep meaning to, I keep meaning to move it and I didn't. It's our son's like little Hot Wheels car. Um, not little. It's probably like 124th instead of 164th. And it's like a DHL delivery van. It's just yeah. like sitting on the cat's bed. And it's, it's like, like <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, moving on before we get into this <laughs> intro, I do have one final thing I do want to talk about. And What's that? uh, that's to one of our listeners, Mark out of Maryland. Uh, he helps run capital hoops out of the DC area. It's like a summer rec league where you can go out and play basketball. You can watch basketball. Nice. Um, really cool guy. And uh, I told him I would definitely give him a shout out because you know, of how loyal of a listener and that's awesome. Him and his buddies listen and they take bets on how often we say things like, um, <laughs> with that being said, <laughs> Oh, that's right. You know what you I mean? Me. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Um, so, um, <laughs> We'll That's have hilarious. That's yeah. awesome. So we'll have a uh, capital hoops, uh, their Twitter page and their link tree link below as well. So you guys yep. can go follow them. If you're in the area and you're interested in hoops. Yep. Um, go show some really love. good guy. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Um, with that being said, <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Everybody drink. <laughs> yep. exactly. <laughs> Season 40. Best of the best. Corey lay. Hey, whoa. Hit him. <laughs> That's my line. <laughs> Jay from Survivor. Right. CT's the GOAT. That's, there we go. I gave we it to everybody. 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 What's there. Corey's? I know Circle it's not K here, is my fucking shit. Yeah, Circle K. Yeah. Circle K. <laughs> That's right. All right. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. <laughs> Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning back into the Challenge Fandom Podcast. We've got another episode of the Trash Talk Roundtable where we're going to be breaking down episode 11, Slippery Business, <laughs> especially in the fucking clam chop. <laughs> Watch out for that scorpion. Oh, wait, that's a cobra. My bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're so happy to bring... Uh, be bringing you the recap of this episode of USA 2. Got myself, Ricky Hayes, my beautiful wife, Karina Hayes, Tony Stats, and then right behind him is Info Lance. And then, of course, Josh motherfucking Chambers. Let's go. Mm -hmm. So, guys. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm done. Wow. I'm sorry. No, fuck. I could I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> what did you guys think of this episode? 30,000 foot view. You know what I mean? I thought it was great. I am sad that they named the episode the same thing that they named the daily. Thank you. At least they didn't name it the same thing as an episode from a previous season. Or a Will Smith movie. That's yes, fair. exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like, I mean, it's now we're half actually as of this episode, over half of the cast is survivor. So I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. I agree. It is a survivor heavy cast right now. Um, I feel like we're probably going to lose uh, just by numbers looking. I don't know. Maybe not. No, no, they would have to, because if we're thinking four girls run, that means we got one girl left to get rid of. No, two yeah, girls, one, two girls, two girls, two? two girls. There's Desi, Chanel, Michaela, Tori, Cassidy, uh, Michelle. Michelle, Michelle. So, and five of those are survivor. Yeah. So we're going to have to lose one survivor girl. Yeah. Um, guys just looking by the numbers, we're probably going to have to lose one guy. Yeah. But if there's such a random mix of them, most of them are challenged. I was going to say, unless it's, unless it's Chris, then yeah. you're not losing a survivor guy. Yeah. Well, and he's one fucking elimination for tying the record yep. for most Again, elimination yeah. win seasons in almost damn near back to back seasons. And look, dude, Chris has fucking earned his spot. And yeah. look, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be heavy on the Chris fucking the Chris, are you riding the Chris train I'm now? riding the Chris train it's yep. I mean aboard. how how can you not at this yeah. point you know he's impressive he like I was really intrigued to see Chris even before the the season started he was like I think he was my first draft pick first um, or second first or second draft pick you know like I was super intrigued about Chris from the start his survivor story you know just everything about it 
like you said, he now he's four and zero in eliminations. He's yeah. one of the most feared people in the house. Like he's fucking killing it. So no, that I, I'm I'm really here for Chris, and I'm definitely still on the Chris train. <laughs> Don't blame you. I see what the hype's about. Josh, what did you think of this episode? Uh, it is what it is. It wasn't. I wasn't impressed with the the daily that much. I wasn't impressed with the the elimination, and it was the Michaela show. So. You mean just because my fantasy draft team won the daily? <laughs> Do I still got more fantasy players than you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, but I don't need access. <laughs> so I like the daily. I just don't like how it got played out. I, no. I like half of how it got played out. Yep. Touche. The elimination, I enjoyed it. I just think it was executed poorly by one of the contestants. Um, but we'll get into that more too. Let's just dive into yeah, it. Yeah, let's just let's All just right. break into the episode. Um, so right off top, we get Corey and Michaela talking in the kitchen. Mm. And oh, this it this conversation and, was interesting. Yeah, I really like this because the way Corey phrased it was basically like, I only want the strongest women in the final. Yeah. Because he kind of understands what this is probably gonna be, where the guys and girls either are paired for the whole final or have to rotate who they're paired with right um and so he only wants tori michaela desi and chanel in there Mm -hmm. like so at some point michelle and cassie got to go for him yeah and look as from a male's perspective looking at that final being that way i think it's the right strategy and the right way to go about it i mean what's your guys's opinion oh yeah i mean a hundred percent it's for for Corey. That's like, that's the best case scenario is to be able to go to the final knowing that you, if you are partnered, you know, throughout or even switch or whatever, that every single option in there is someone that, you know, is well-rounded and that can contribute and help you get that win. Like Corey, he's hungry. Like he's so hungry for that win. You know, we, we see a little bit of it in the following scene when he has that family call with his, or that call with his family. You know, like he's really hungry for that win. And he he has a lot of confidence this season. It's definitely the right strategy for him. My concern is how many of the women is he going to be able to get on board? Because when it does, as we see in this episode, when it comes down to those nominations, the the women don't feel the same. And it's in reverse, too. Like the women, I'm sure, want strong men there at the end for the final. And obviously, you know, some of the men are like, don't want that, you know, because they have to compete against them. So, and that's what makes the, you know, the fact that we have that male winner and the female winner, you know, that dynamic in the nomination table, that's what makes it so interesting because how is it going to work out, especially this deep into the season? Well, and that's like, that's the issue too, is when you get this deep and you're only a few eliminations away from the final, that's when it gets really hard because the guys don't want to run against the strong guys and the girls don't want to run against the strong girls. Yep. So you have to try to find that even keel. And I think that they did a good job when they actually, once they actually got talking at the table at first, they had to get on the same wavelength and it wasn't even necessarily that they had differing ideals. It was, they had different ways of saying it and one wasn't understanding the other or giving the other space. And it just was like butting heads. But once you get down to it, it is very simply like, who can I give you that won't make my game next to impossible going forward? Because there's not teams like it's two individuals who won a daily. Right. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm going to I've got a whole diatribe about this whole situation. I'm going to save it for that. So oh, for about nominations. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely yeah. So, that for that. Um, that's where that went. But, <laughs> yeah. But. <laughs> With Corey's next scene, like you were talking about, where he calls home, Mm -hmm. I fucking love this so much. Like, don't get me wrong. I love Corey saying, you know, I'm doing it for my kids. But when you get that interaction where you see him on the phone with his wife and talking to his daughters and he starts crying and you start, you understand because we're all dads here. We get it. Like, I couldn't imagine how difficult that would be. Could not imagine. you, You, dude, I've had to go away for like, five days on a business trip and I'm like fucking FaceTiming her every two hours. Like, let me talk to the kids. Let me, you know, and <laughs> yeah. like, so to be gone for weeks on end, like I feel yeah. for him. Harper was just at Disneyland for a week. So I get it. 
Yeah, <laughs> dude. It's He's difficult. Been back and I've been over there every single day just doing a drive by hug. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's difficult. Let's it's really go get difficult. lunch real quick. Anything. Something, you know what I mean? Yeah. I get it, man. Something. So, no, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, but that really is all that happened in the <sighs> intro. I mean, and I'm okay with that. Like, I Me like too. the fact that we got right into the daily, which once again is called slippery business. I mean, I, I, I am disappointed in that. Like, come on, guys. Like, you could do better than that. Come on. It works for the daily to change the name of the episode. Yeah. It'd be 100%. It works great 100. for the daily. But, like, why are we just copying? They could have, come you, on. You know what they could have done? They could have called it slip and flip by the person who flipped their vote at the end. You know, <laughs> well, and that would have been go. a good fucking title. But, there you, you know what, MTV, you had your opportunity to get in touch with me and you haven't done it. So. <laughs> No, I'm joking. Um, we know you're listening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, the daily was obviously called slippery business, like I just said. Mm-hmm. But as TJ said, there's not much explain. It's old fashioned. Let's get lathered up in looks like olive oil and wrestle. <laughs> it's going to be a good time. We're going to kick some tires, light some fires. Um, no, they uh, they have to all get into the ring, all the men at the same time, and then all the women at the same time. Um, and it's basically if you, any part of your body touches outside of the ring, you're out yeah. right away. Um, and last one standing wins. So, and the part I really enjoy is obviously we get the men up front, but his banana is really trying to put on a show for all the women. Okay. First of all, I just want to say really quick that this scene right here proves the difference between like yeah. MTV and CBS, right? Because like last uh, on uh, 38 on Rider Dies, you know, we got that scene of Arasio riding the bike and, you know, they made it all like sexy and, you know, all this. And then and they had the perfect opportunity to do some major thirst trapping with this with this little scene here. And they made it like funny and like corny and like put like awkward and like corny music behind it. And like <laughs> Did all they the, made like, it even worse when the women showed up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was like, this is the difference between we don't get thirst traps on CBS. <laughs> it is interesting to see the paradigm shift between the two networks that broadcast it. You yeah. know what I mean? And not even, yeah, I guess networks, they're owned by the same parent company, but, but still, just what their demographic is and who they're shooting for CBS versus MTV. <laughs> like when we get 39 on bet there isn't that many prescription drug commercials if for 100 percent for sure <laughs> yeah like no offense to cbs but like i know about them all now all and their side effects and their wow but anyways um guys uh end up going first bananas making a fool of himself but michelle was in on that she was full send she was like this is the best part of the day so she, far for me she said this is the best part of the Jesus. challenge oh the challenge oh, so shit. far yeah oh, <laughs> like the shit. whole the whole shit so she was really enjoying herself <laughs> michelle got some play this episode she I, did. I i appreciate it i appreciate it yeah she did <laughs> um so they all get into the ring right away it's everybody fucking gang up on, gang up on chris and yeah. it's like Everybody except for Faisal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Faisal was like, you guys, you guys got this, right? He misunderstood. He didn't. He thought that it was person who stands on the side for the longest, not last one standing. Ah, ah, there you go. That makes sense now. I was wondering why he was just standing there the whole time. You I mean, know? <laughs> and, and, you know, it's an issue when the other competitors like Desi's calling it out. Like he's just standing <laughs> there, not doing anything. It's like, <laughs> that's what supervisors at you know, state jobs do. They sit there and tell you, go do there, go there, do this. You know, it's true, Josh. Yep. Yes. Facts. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> but really quick, I do want to say that, yes, Chris got ganged up on and he got out first, but he, and it could be editing, but it seemed like he was in there for quite a while fighting those and- guys off. Like he, he fought hard and he was able to fight them off for a while. And those are some yeah. big boys that were trying to push him out of that ring. So like, that was pretty impressive to me. He definitely made it look like they worked for it. Yeah. Look, yeah. He made him earn it. Yeah. And look, the heart that this dude has and the ability he's shown to come in and just turn the switch when he's in an elimination or a daily. Yeah. yeah. Look, I, 
he's quickly earning a fan in me because it reminds me a lot of Arasio from Ride or Dies. Yeah. You know, but I relate to Chris even more because of the family behind it. And I understand what he's fighting for. And and don't get me wrong, not to say that Arasio, uh, what he's fighting for, I don't understand or don't think it's as valid. It's just I connect more with Chris. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I, I was rooting for him hard and I was disappointed when what happened, the daily happened with them getting him out. Yeah. Um, and then what after that, they it was did ben- the same thing to Tyler. Everybody. No, it was it was no, bananas yes, they and Tyler. Did. They ganged up on Tyler and Tyler pulled bananas out with him. And they went out at the same time. Bananas and Tyler went at it for a majority of it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's because the other two told him to. It wasn't yeah. necessarily that they <laughs> didn't like, want to. They said, you keep calling him out. You take him out. But anyways, it, 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 with that being said, Bananas gave it to him. But Tyler was like even Tyler fought. Yeah. Even Bananas said, man, he's shifty. Like, he, yeah, he, he can move. Yeah. And he's he's got like the build of a swimmer is what it reminds me of. Like the, mm-hmm. the tall kind of like lanky down the bottom with the wide shoulders and everything. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, I. Uh, I did like what Tyler did where he knew he was going out and he couldn't stop it. So he just brought bananas with, with him. him. Yeah. 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 He's like, like, that we're, was we're both going down, <laughs> but it's, it's not like bananas had anything to lose. Like no. Josh Fessy or Faisal and Corey are in there and Fessy, they're not, yeah. they're not going to go after bananas. No, at this point. they don't, but they did. So what, what surprised me though, was that they went after like Fessel. I expected Josh and Fessel to, get Corey out to like work together to get Corey out. Yeah. But they did not do that. Like Fessel just like stood there while Josh and Corey wrestled. And it was almost like, I don't know. I, I, and maybe I misunderstood the situation, but it felt like maybe Fessel was kind of cheering for Josh to get out. Like, I don't know. Like it just, it, it was just odd to me. I don't know, but Fessy was touchy in this whole scene where Josh and Corey were wrestling. He was trying to push him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he put his finger up his butt, trying to push him out. Yeah, it, so he didn't. Like, he didn't go like this. He he went like this. I just and wonder, just like putting that out there. I just wonder, like why, why Josh? Like why would Fessy not want to get Corey out of that? Well, room? and here's my thing: is is like N- nothing against Josh. I'm just saying, like Corey's something else he, he could have got them both out because they were the way they were positioned close to the edge if he pushed josh and forced them both to go out he wins without having to do that too is much. that is a really good point that's a good point yeah no that's actually true but i'm glad he didn't do that because us getting the matchup of Corey versus fessy yeah. was exactly what i wanted to see and even yeah. with Corey being gassed yeah like he still fucking put it on Fessy. Yeah, he did. As he was calling it for Fessel, Fessel was Fessel was calling it for himself. There's like this is my wheelhouse. I got this. Yeah, and do Corey Strong. I mean, yeah. Desi wasn't necessarily saying that Fessel was going to win. She just said that Fessel hadn't done anything up to that point, so he didn't have any expended energy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Really quick, before we move on to the girls round, I wanted to ask you guys your opinion on this. So after everybody gangs up on Chris and gets Chris out of the out of the ring, Chris has a confessional where he's like, you know, all five of these guys, you know, these big ass guys are, you know, ganging up on me. And he's like, you know, D-I-R-T-Y, like calling it dirty. (laughs) So my question is. Was that dirty play or is it fair game when you're in the oil, when you're in the ring like that? Nothing about what they did or their tactics were dirty in the men's play. It wasn't. No, it wasn't dirty. It wasn't against the rules. It wasn't fair. Yeah, but it wasn't against the rules. It's part of the game. They didn't at once at one point say, hey, it has to be one on one matchups. They didn't say everybody can't go after one person, which we see multiple times in this. Do I like it? No, because I think. I would have really enjoyed seeing Chris go against Fessy or against Josh would, one-on-one or even against Corey one-on-one. I think Corey wins this no matter what, but I was going to say, so I was going to, that was going to be my, my additional question. And sorry, I know um, Tony, I know you had something to say, but um, I'll just tack this on really quick on it uh, with that previous question is <laughs> um, <laughs> if it was like part of the rules of, you know, you could only do like one-on-one matches and Chris didn't get ganged up on like that. Do you th- like, do you think he still gets out first or, you know what I mean? Like, how do you think he fares against the other guys? If it's, it, it just all depends on if they did it in a heat type. I mean, that's the only way it would have made sense because who goes against who 
there's odd men yeah, out. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. I think in a one-on-one situation, Chris has a legitimate shot with everyone in there. I think he has the hardest time with Corey because Corey, Corey is the same build, but just more built. I, I was don't know thinking, how to say it. I was thinking that. Corey and Fessel would probably be his, his biggest, like... I think he has trouble with Josh, too. Yeah. I, well, here's my thing. In wrestling, much like football, it's about, you know, the hardest guys to wrestle are the stocky guys mm. because they get the center of gravity on you and it's hard to, to get low with them and be able to control it. But with that being said, it's all about how much fight you go you have in you. And look, I, I'm not mad. I'm glad Corey won this. I'm oh, yeah. glad that it, he won this daily at this point because it's like the right time in the season to win it. You that's know that's I mean? your day one pick there, Rick. I know, and that's what I'm saying. He's been playing it low, playing the CT game, mm-hmm. and now he's showing out. It's time to go. You know what yeah. I mean? And he's securing his spots and getting the right setup for the final. I'm excited to see how this all plays out. Yeah. After that, I mean, we get the girls coming up, and like Josh said, it was it was so corny the way they had it set up. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you you sit there and you you listen to them. They're like, oh my god, look at them go five on one. Who does that? I mean, how do, and then look what they do. And then they did the it exact too, yeah. same thing. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. So here's my thing. Very much like how I think Chris could take any one of those guys. He would have some trouble with them. Nonetheless, a couple of them. Yeah. I think Tori, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. She could. I think win. they knew that, though, and that's yeah. why they did that. But I am upset that we didn't get the Tori Michaela at the end. As good as it was that we got Tori and or uh, Chanel and Michaela. Tori and Michaela at the end is the one I want to see or Tori and Desi or yep. Michaela Desi. Yeah, it's yeah. I'm sorry. I wanted I, to see one of those three. I was so freaking disappointed when Michaela went over and pushed Desi out. I was like, no, you're supposed to go against her in the like, what are you doing? Dude, what are you doing? she <laughs> kind of cheap shotted Chanel and I'm not mad about it, but like Chanel wasn't even paying attention. Just came over and, yeah, she did. and I was like, oh, fuck. But she was throwing. She was ready to go. Michaela came to fight. I, yeah, I don't she mean did. to win. She came to to fight she had more yeah. punches thrown more kicks thrown i thought i thought she was gonna super kick somebody's head off <laughs> <laughs> this she there was nobody gonna stop michaela the way that she was playing and the way that she was going for it she was definitely going for the win she was going all out yeah dude she was locking people's head in between her legs <laughs> dude, dude, she, flips. Dude, dude she was wild she, i appreciate yeah. every Lamb second chops of or whatever those were what clam, chops. Was called? clam chops. Clam chops. And we'll we'll get into that. But Tony, this is a moment to shine. Like right away, Tori's out, and it's nothing but a survivor matchup. Like, what were you thinking? I figured that it was going to end up being Michaela and Desi. But as soon as Michaela saw her chance to get Desi out, I'm glad that she did it. Because it was just like the icing on the cake of okay, fine. This is my opportunity. Boop, you're out. And then, like, the, there was the shot of basically Michaela versus Michelle and Chanel versus Cassidy at one point. And it was just, like, limbs and everything else <laughs> in every direction. Yeah. And nobody, nobody was sugarcoating it. Everybody was there to be the last person on the mat. Yeah, and that's what the women's daily had that the men's lacked entirely. Exactly. Is yep. Every single person that hit that mat was there to play. Versus, well, once Chris and Tyler and maybe Bananas and possibly Josh get out, then I'll see whether or not I would like to participate at this time. <laughs> Whereas, as soon as Tej said go, they were gone. Yeah, and that's really why I'm glad Fessy didn't win. It was it wasn't even anything like necessarily against him. It was like, bro, you didn't do shit the yeah. whole fucking time. Yeah, 100%. You, just didn't, there, you didn't you know? earn it. Yeah, so you know, um, and that's the thing though, like because we've been repping Fessy these last two because he earned it. He yeah. went out there yeah. and did what he needed to do, and yeah. so it's no hate on him. It's legitimately he just sat yes. there and watched and put and and, and slapped Josh's karma. ass. Yeah, and that was his you know? karma. But going back to the girls, I think that Josh put it like perfectly in that confessional yep. they had. And I didn't write it down, so I don't know it word for word. But he said something along the lines of like that, you know, the girls round was so like intense and rough. 
that he would rather like do the guys round like a bunch of times over and over before he did one round with those girls yeah. because they were yeah. going yeah. so hard. And they it, came out for blood. They did. And but like you said, that's what was missing from the men's round. Like yep. that's what I would have loved to just see those men just go out there and just fucking go to town, you know, like. Well, that, that's what we were all waiting for, because we've seen yeah. this daily mm -hmm. in the previews and even like obviously last week for the next week on. So everybody is anticipating this is the moment where you can get all of that house drama out uh -huh. in a daily, all the disagreements, any interaction that you weren't cool with, with somebody else in the house. This is your opportunity to literally level the playing field. Yeah. And the men like, I don't know, played crazy eights at one point, like yeah. off to the side while other people did stuff. I don't think Chanel deserved her hair being pulled, but outside of that, I agree. <laughs> Look, do I think, do I think Michaela was played dirtier than what Chris accused the guys of doing? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. She straight do, hit Tori right in the fucking It was open hand. It wasn't close no, face. So, but still, but, but look like, I was but like whoa. He, here's my thing like it's nothing that I would call super dirty play like oh no you can't do that. She no. just went super hard it's in the paint like, and yeah. I appreciate it. It wasn't like you know like what Fessy was doing to Nelson exactly. in the, where he was purposely trying to cause damage, you know what I mean? It was just throwing a uh, knee. I don't, I don't know. That Spartan kick was pretty harsh. Uh, well, and, here's my and thing: then the, the hair pulling at the end to to uh, to solidify the the win. I mean, no. Look here, I watched I mean, that. You twice. even had people. You even had people in the background. Oh my gosh, she's pulling her hair. Well, here's my thing: that move that M Michaela pulled on Chanel at I the end catch it. is a classic wrestling move, and you know it, Josh. Yep. She was laid yeah, across, and she put the hand over the head. The fucking hand underneath the hips and popped her hips up and rolled her right out. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen it. But look, one last thing before what I think was the line of the night, and I know you think the same way, <laughs> but is the fact that I love the part when right after Tori got out, and then I think it was uh, Michelle got out, and it was Cassidy mm -hmm. and Desi's oh, right there yeah. and Desi's just like we're just in there so I just was like fuck it I'm gonna wrestle her and just like straight out tackles her I thought yeah. that was fucking hilarious <laughs> I love that yeah I was not expecting that but it was pretty funny <laughs> um, she's like I looked around she wasn't part of my alliance so I went boom well, yeah let's go gotta go gotta get out Desi had the confessionals of the night like for sure mm. she Unlock. had great confessionals she had some really good ones but to me what Tori said, and look, with her going out first, I was kind of pissed about it because it puts her in a bad position. And she's the only person I have on my fantasy team left. <laughs> but with that being said, she getting out first got to let gave her the opportunity to watch everybody else go. And so that way she was able to become like a commentator. And the line that she gave during the fucking wrestling match between yeah. Chanel and Michaela is fucking hilarious it was, she says she says did these girls just come out of a wrestlemania because where are these moves coming from you see like the scorpion and the clam chop and i'm just like what is going on <laughs> it's an epic battle though but yeah which it was it was, it was chanel versus michaela was uh, absolutely fucking insane the way they were but, twisting around it literally looked like watching wwe F when I was a kid and seeing yeah. guys like the one, two, three kid, the way they would spin around and jump yeah. around and do stuff or like in later generations, like God, I can't Mysterio, Ray Mysterio. Mm. Watch Ray Mysterio. Yeah. Who we yeah. Two girl. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they were going so hard at each other and it was, it, it was really great to see. It's a daily, like we said, we've all been waiting yeah. for um, one last thing, the scorpion thing. Sting should have made that his signature move, putting that out there right now. <laughs> um, but like, uh, I know you saw the tweet that Scott said, right, Josh, where he's like, where he's talking about this Tory quote, and he goes, "She didn't get one of those moves right, but mad <laughs> respect because because <laughs> you know the feeling, the sentiment was there, you know. So and yeah. I appreciate yes. that she got WrestleMania right, so I'm okay with that." Yeah, yeah, there you exactly. go. Yeah, A for effort. She could she could have called it challenge mania. 
They should could have. She she got close. They would have probably cut that. Though. They probably they would have. Aired that. And I, you know what? Look, the fact that she put it out there, I appreciate it because that's exactly what it was. Yeah. It was a great daily. We all really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. You know, just as much as we hope you enjoy this ad from Spotify for podcasters. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you so much for sticking through that ad for Spotify for podcasters. We're back to recap the rest of episode 11 of USA 2 slippery business <laughs> in, in the, the clam, clam shop. shop. <laughs> <laughs> um, where we left off was the daily where Michaela won for the women and Corey won for the men. Um, and what, now what? we're getting back to the house into the liberation. Um, before we even get into it, we get the scene of Michaela talking with her girls, Chanel and Desi. And of course, it's like an exact repeat of last week, which yeah. is I want to throw Tori in. And the girls don't want it, Desi and Chanel, because they know that if Tori gets thrown in, they're going to be the ones who get the votes to go in to try to take her out, you know. Um, and, and I can't really blame them. But I mean, but Michaela has a really great point, too. She's like, you know, if we yeah. meaning the survivor girls, if we yeah. don't vote her in, nobody's going to vote her in, you know. So like I see both both sides of this, but I, j I don't really know how to feel about it because I, I, if I was in Desi and Chanel's place, I would not, I would feel the exact same. I'd be like, nah, bro. Like you just want to do this because you're safe, but that's yeah. our ass on the line. You know, the flip side too, is like the whole point. Cause um, Chanel said, basically Michaela has ha always had to play such a proactive game that she can do less here. I was like, yeah, but if you do less then Tori is standing next to you at the final. Mm -hmm. So I like you, I understand both sides of it. Like on the one hand, if you don't put Tori in, nobody else will. But the only people who can conceivably take Tori out are also the rest of your alliance. Right. And the downside is if Cassidy or Michelle were to win, I don't see either one of them putting Tori in. I mean, and, and that's the thing is like, and that's what's the, this, this whole part is so difficult for me because like I said, I see Michaela's side, I see the girl's yep. side and then, it, but the, but then at the same time, it's like, okay, let's say that Michaela got her way and she got to vote Tori in, right? Then she still has to, Tori now knows that she voted her in and yep. she still has to rely on the rest of the house also wanting Tori to go home and making it a girl's day because they could just flip it on her like they did and make it a guy's day. You know what I mean? And then she yep. put her ass on the line for no reason. Tori's pissed off and she's coming back with a vengeance, even though she didn't have to go in. You still put her up. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I, like, I don't know what I would do in this situation. They, they alliance to their way into a no win scenario. Yep. The best way I can look at this is how would Michaela feel if it was the other way that Desi won and said, I want to put up Tori. And all of a sudden Michaela realizes it's going to be me or Chanel going in. Cause if anybody else wants to get rid of Tori, they're not voting for Mich uh, or I'm sorry. It's going to be yeah. Chanel and they're not going to vote for yeah. uh, Cassie or Michelle. Yeah. They're going to vote for one of us. Cause we have the best chances of doing it. Right. No, Michaela would not want to do that. Yeah. That is bad for her game. Right. And I understand not wanting Tori in the final because that's a very valid concern. <laughs> that is also bad for your game. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah. bad for your end game. Yes. Um, I feel like they have already missed their opportunity to get Tori out at this yeah. point. If you wanted Tori out, you had to do it in the first five episodes. Yeah, you had yeah, to just it's keep... mutually assured destruction at this point. Yeah. They, they can't take each other out. And like there it is a no win scenario with that group of like four women, including Tori. Yeah, because that was their alliance that they had for however many episodes. Tori's won two dailies. Michaela's won two dailies. Like they're the only women who have seen the deliberation table since it went individual. Right. Well, and, and that's the thing, like leading into the actual deliberation between Corey and Michaela. Michaela brings it up to Corey and Corey's the worst person to bring it up to because Corey's looking at it from the perspective of I'm going to have to run this final with women and I don't want to run it with anyone but the strongest women and yeah. I've already got an alliance set up with Tori. She's never going to say my name 
And if I even did put myself in this situation, she's going to go in more than likely win and then come back and be pissed off. And I'm going in next and we're not at the final yet. Exactly. And so yeah. like, like I get what Michaela's trying to do. It's just not the right time, not the right person. If Chris is sitting in there, you got a better chance of pulling this move. But well, and and that's the thing because you know Michaela obviously you know when they're when she's sitting at the table with Corey, she brings up the point in her confessional that her ultimate goal right now is to try to get Tori in, you know, and try to make it so that there's not a situation where her Desi and Chanel have to go against each other in like the final elimination yeah. right before the final, yeah. right? I totally get that. 100%. But at the same time, that should have been something that you guys were thinking about long ago. Like two to three eliminations till the final is not the time to be like, hey, wait a second. We need to come up with this plan. Like she should have been planning that and working on that like weeks ago. You know what I mean? Like, and, and to credit what Chanel was saying, because I read it online as well. She said, look, in Survivor, you're playing for jury votes. So you need big moves yeah. in order to win the game. In the challenge, you're not playing for jury. You're playing for the final and then to outperform your competitors. Yeah. So, you know, that's the thing with Michaela, And she'll get it. There's a learning curve on every oh, one yeah. of these. I mean, there's a learning curve for when the rookies came in from real world and road rules. Yeah. It's the same yep. thing. Um, but she'll get there. Go ahead, Josh. No, I, I said this in chat. I, I feel that Tori should have taken the shot when she won the two in a row. Yeah. I feel Michaela should have taken a shot. I, I mean, two, three weeks ago would have been better. But again, you're almost at the end. You know, you're almost at the end. You can tell by the amount of people in the room. You take that shot. Exactly. Yeah. You have to. I, I just want to reiterate that throwing in Tori, impeccable move for Michaela. Absolutely. A, a really smart move. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Toss her ass in. Try to get rid of her every chance you can. However. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, you also have to take into consideration that it's not just you making the, the decision. You yep. also have to make that decision with a male who is thinking about who he wants to run with in the final. And Tori is like one of the prime people that all the men are going to want to want run with in the final. So, you know, and that's what I mean is like it's 100 percent. It, it would have came out the same way. It would have ended up a day, a guy's day, I feel. What I will say that I really and did enjoy about this nomination ceremony, and I feel like there was obviously a lot more to the conversation and we just kind of saw like a condensed shortened version yeah. of it. Yeah. But I liked the way that Michaela and uh, Chris, or I'm sorry, Michaela and Corey ended up coming to their conclusion where they said, you know, look, I'm Michaela. I'm going to pick a guy and you Corey, you pick a girl. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? So the guy is picking the girl. The girl is picking the guy. And it's kind of like, who do you not want to be in that final with? And Throw them in. You know what I and mean? And so I, yeah. And I really, really like that approach of just being like, look, we can't agree who. So I'm going to pick the yeah. guy. You pick the girl. And we're just going to move on. Yeah. And we've been saying this for a while, like even back to worlds, like Danny yeah. and Tori, you pick the guy. I'll pick you the pick girl. One, I pick one. Yeah. 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 And we'll just mm -hmm. call it square. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so I, I did enjoy that as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So, yeah, they end up going with, uh, you know, because Corey says, look, the only people I'm really comfortable saying is Cassidy and Michelle. Yeah. I was surprised by Michelle. I thought he was going to go a different way. But once again, he's looking long term at the final. Mm -hmm. Like we've been saying, they go back to the house. They find out they do Cassidy and fucking uh, Tyler instead of Chris. Sorry. <laughs> that's the so part that surprised me. Chris. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's the part that surprised me is that she actually went Tyler instead of Chris because it feels like there's less blood. But I know she's trying to keep the survivor people together. And I liked what she did about Tyler as well. Because Corey pushed back on Tyler because yes, he said, exactly. like, I can work with Tyler. And Michaela was just like, look, he's had the opportunity to work with me four or five times and he has not followed through on it. And then Corey was just like, I did not know that. And then he was fine with Tyler. And like, that's that's what I like about Michaela is she's able to pivot in those situations and just be like, look, this is why it's beneficial for both of us. Right. He has had the opportunity to work with me and has chosen not to. So if you're thinking that he's going to work with you, it's probably not. Here's my thing is the whole debate was almost like a perfect storyline. It was, yep. you know, the build up, build up, build up. 
climax, action, fighting, resolution, solution. Yep. Yeah. End of story. <laughs> and and I look, it was well played. It was. It was really well played. It was. This is the part that I found really interesting. And I know Karina and me were both kind of talking about this and one of your guys' mm-hmm. opinion. And even for those listening, let us know what you're thinking. Yeah. Is Michaela saying Tori's name because right after she tells Corey with Corey being like one of Tori's main alliance members he goes back and tells everybody look she was wanting to put Tori in including Tori he tells yeah. Tori you know is this going to fuck up her game or are we too close to the final where it's not going to matter I mean it's kind of a coin flip it would rely on Tori winning the daily which is a 50-50 shot at this point um, it would also rely on her going into the deliberation with a guy who doesn't want Michaela in the final. Yeah. So there are a lot of variables that have to fall into place. I see it. I could see it happening, but I could also see it being way too late in the game for the exact same reason that Michaela couldn't get Tori in there. Yeah, no. And and I'm on the same page. Like, I just think three, three, four episodes ago, she's screwed. She would have gotten some repercussions. Yeah. But this close, like we've got what? One, two more eliminations. Mm-hmm. If that, maybe there's a purge. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, especially so, after seeing the next time on. Yeah. So I just, I don't see it. It could happen, like the path to it, but I only see one path where, like, Doctor Strange would say, like, from uh, Infinity Wars, like, I see 417 million different ways, <laughs> but there's only one right answer for her to go in one. and lose. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, She's going to the final, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I it's, agree. I, I feel it's the same thing as just throwing her in there. As I was Michaela saying her name, saying, no, this is my fault. You're going in there. Even though a, a female didn't go in there, it's the same thing. But who knows if there's enough time left for it to go against Michaela? Right. Like yeah. you said, especially with who she's aligned with. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, no, that's I don't, true. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's got some solid numbers around her. You know what I mean? And, you know, she's she's insulated herself pretty well, especially adding Chris on with the girls on this episode. You know what I mean? So I, I don't think that it's going to come back and and affect Michaela because like there it's so close to the end and there's not a whole lot anybody can really do unless she can get like a bunch of guys or whoever wins like on board to get rid of Michaela, which, like you guys said, is going to be really difficult because. She's performed so well that people are going to, you know, these men are going to want her in the final. So I don't think it will. The only way I see it happening is if Cassidy wins a daily. That. Yeah. But if if Cassidy wins the daily, then it's not Tori making the move. No, but I say she puts in Tori or she puts in Michaela because of the conversation we're going to talk about here in a minute. But I think she puts in Michaela for her own revenge. It's not It has nothing to do with Tori. For Tori. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I still think there's a there's a chance Michaela goes in. That's the only real path I see because like the only other way is if Michaela willingly tells like Desi or Chanel if they win the daily to say, hey nominate Tori and then let's get the votes on me. Yeah. And I'll take her and out I'll take her out. But I just I don't see that happening. I don't that's, know that Michaela's that dumb. To no, do that. no, no, she's no. not. Plus, Tori was on the sidelines in the next time on. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, that could be editing, though. She could actually also be in the elimination. Well, look you at what they know. did with Tiffany. Mm-hmm. If you guys don't believe us, <laughs> we promise we, you we promise you go to Paramount. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clip it because now I have the episode. I'm going to clip it. And I'm going to I'm going to put it out right after this episode. So there we go. Follow our IG rate us five stars. Yes. While you're doing that, listen to us talk about after (laughs) the the nominations when the house finds out and then we get into a house party. So everybody. Oh, my God. Everybody finds out that it's going to be Tyler and Cassidy going down. Um, and then we get into this little house party where everybody kind of just relaxes. And look, I enjoy these actually. Shout out to to Tony's wife, Sarah, more than the bar scenes is when it gets down to the smaller number of people in the house and they just kick back and have some drinks and have fun. Yeah. It reminds me very of uh, late in the game, Big Brother, when you get down to like the final six and mm-hmm. they have just a little bit more fun and enjoyment with each other. Yeah. Um, but Cassidy looks like she's having a <laughs> lot of fun living her best life. And she's you know making what? out with people. She's getting lap dances. She's, she's just giving having lap the, dances. Li- yeah. Living her best life. Well, let's give a shout out to Michelle. Michelle yeah. went for it. Best, best trooper out there. Yes. That's Look, a friend. 
That's the kind of, yeah, that's the kind of girlfriend you need. So <laughs> side, sidebar, I just saw this online. I'll send it to you guys in chat here in a little bit. Um, but there was this conversation going on about how Michelle uh, tried to get Laurel to make out with her. Oh yeah. I saw that. And Michelle appre- she, she admitted it. Yeah. And then Laurel was like, no, I didn't. And Michelle was like, I thought she said maybe, but she said no, apparently. And I believe that. But what she doesn't know is, uh, I'm I de- not deterred by rejection. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, fuck yeah, Michelle, go for it. Look like, <laughs> Michelle might not be the best competitor in but the game, she's funny. but she's she she has her role in this game very much so, and I yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Um, is anybody surprised that Tori was upside down twerking on Cassidy? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, I, well, if you had to pick that on a bingo card, I was like, that's Tori. That's yeah. That's I didn't Tori. even need to see the face. I just knew it was Tori. It was either Tori or bananas, one of the two. <laughs> Just in the same outfit there. it could have been either one of them either one yeah. <laughs> matching outfits um, was probably both of them <laughs> it was during this house party there is a little bit of game talk and it's uh josh bananas fessy and Corey uh, all agree that they're gonna vote oh Chris, yeah they're gonna make it a guy make day. it a guy's day Woo. and so w- we kind of get the hint that we might be getting tyler versus chris which the foreshadowing wasn't too bad this episode no. watching it on the the rewatch i kind of realized there was a little bit but it your first time through, you would never notice. Yeah. I, so appreciate that. I, I did find this interesting, though, because honestly, and I, I don't know why, but I've never really looked at the eliminations this way. Because when they were like, oh, let's make it a guy's day. Let's make it a guy's day. I was like, why are the guys wanting to make it a guy's day? And then it like clicked. They're like, this is one le- like we're all comfortable that our names are not going to get put in the hopper because we're all agreeing that we're all going to say the same mm-hmm. name. Yep. And this is one less guy's elimination that we don't have to worry about going into. And I was like, that is fucking smart. Theoretically, <laughs> smart. Yeah, theoretically, it makes it there's only one left for yeah. them. Yeah, that's fucking yeah. brilliant. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't even I was like, what? And then on the second watch, I was like, dang, this is smart. Like, this was actually really, really smart of the guys. And so. that's why it makes even more sense that Corey was so apt to say, no, I don't want to throw Tori. in, and he probably would have been just as defiant against desi or chanel because he wants them in that final Mm -hmm. because he knows how close they really are yeah the thing that's kind of funny is the guys pushing for a guy's day and a guy's elimination and telling chris that it's going to be a girl's day yeah all that did was pretty much solidify that underwood's best way forward is working with the girls exactly well the but the girls told him it was going to be a girl's day too because that's what they were trying to push but that's but they actually but were that trying was their to plan. Do. the guy yeah. lied you know but <laughs> he should know what's happening they've tried to get him in every single fucking time Corey just didn't get the blood on his hands of making him the main vote but he it's knew still, it was yeah. going to happen in the house yeah, yeah. he knew it was going to happen yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but here's my thing is I've said this in joking before, but going into elimination as hard as it is, especially having to go four fucking times in a season, it's a gift because guess what? Everybody's going to say, I want Chris back next year. Yeah. I want Chris back on the next season. I want to see Chris against this guy. I want to see. And so it's given us, the viewer and the fans, the demand for him, and they're going to do their best to bring him back for it. And I hope he does come back. I do too. So, I, I would love to see him back again. And if you look at the people that he's taken out of the game, he's sort of taken out the different body types from the male challengers that you generally see. Because you've got Lewis, you've got Seabass, Wes, and now Tyler. So he's taken on four completely different types of eliminations with four different types of male competitors. All smaller than him. And he's come up. Lewis isn't smaller than him. Lewis was okay, big. Except for big. Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. Tyler's a big guy too. I mean, he's yeah. just, he's just not as stocky, but yeah. stocky. Yeah. He's way taller. Seabass was the only one that would have had a disadvantage with strength and it was all beer pong. So <laughs> that was, yeah, that is true. That was dope beer pong though. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. That's <laughs> um, So, what I wanted to ask you, Tony, on this one was, what did you think of this conversation between Cassidy and Michaela in the house Ooh. when Cassidy was saying, please don't make it a girl's day? And it makes sense for Michaela to want it to be a girl's day yeah. for the same reason the guys. It's one less elimination. I mean, she's up front 
she's not going to sugarcoat it. Michaela rarely does. Cassidy was saying, basically, Cassidy was explaining all the reasons that Michaela wanted it to be a girl's day anyway, <laughs> but she was using it as an argument against the person who was already making that plan. So it was a very cyclical conversation. And I understand where Cassidy's coming from, where she says that like Michaela is just like all business because in a way she is, but she's all business with the people that she has to eventually take out. She's right. looking to go to the end with Desi and Chanel. So she's really friendly with them and she's really cordial with them. Cassidy, she's not anticipating go- going to the final with because it's not in the cards. So she doesn't. My perception is that she doesn't necessarily see the need to foster that relationship at this point in the game. Right. Yeah. She doesn't know how to play the challenge and doesn't know how to play for future challenge seasons. I mean, I would say that she knows how to play the challenge because she's still there at 11. I disagree with you, Josh. She, I think she's playing a good game. I think she's overplaying her hand, but that's a rookie move anyways. And technically she still is. Oh, she's a, Yeah. I mean, the fact is she's won two individual dailies. She's even though wanting to make a big move has actually made this what she called the dumb move is actually the smart move in this. It's the safe move yeah. to make, mm. especially this late in the game. And she's testing the waters instead of just doing stupid shit. It's not like she's coming in and saying, vote me in. I'm ready to go in, which we give shit to every season to a rookie mm-hmm. happens every fucking season. We have rookies on and I enjoy her gameplay. Honestly, I don't think she's a scrub or anything. Oh, I'm not calling her a scrub in any way, shape, or form. We watched how she played season one. Didn't work out for her. We watched how she's playing this season. I guarantee you the next time she's on, she won't, she'll play a totally different way because she'll be one of the first people targeted because of the way she's playing this game. And everybody's saying this is not Survivor. This is the challenge. She's not playing a challenge game for future challenges. That's all I'm saying. Well, <sighs> maybe she doesn't have any intention to come. I, yeah, I, I don't maybe, know. I mean. Maybe not. Well, she's I'm also just, building the bonds with the people that she feels are going to be on returning play seasons. And that's the point is, look, like she's just not building the bonds with the traditional challenge players. She's building the bonds with the people she's close with, which is Desi Chanel and a little bit Michelle. It doesn't really work out. Nobody really like cares that Michelle is playing both sides. N- well, I think, I think that's going to change yeah. from what we see. But uh, yeah. yeah, as of this episode. Look, like if if we're having a conversation of out of the three girls in that alliance, Michaela, Desi, and Chanel, who's playing the the best game for the challenge? It's between Desi and Chanel to me because they are playing yeah. the quieter game. Desi's playing such a great Michaela, game. you can make a real argument. Those two daily wins, she's making some smart moves. She's played well with Wes. She's played well with mm. bananas to a degree. Look, her interactions <laughs> with Wes in the first half of the season were fucking great. Oh, they were great. No, yeah. I was yeah. just saying like, yeah, they didn't really yeah. work together, but <laughs> she told Wes to move out of my room. <laughs> That's fine. He's retired. <laughs> well, and then, you know, like the whole conversation with Wes. Well, OK, I'm glad you said that, but this is what we're going to do with her and Desi. <laughs> um, but I really hurt his feelings. It, it did. And I he know wrote he about it. <laughs> but. <laughs> I enjoy it, but I think, you know, you can make a real argument for it, but I still think because they're playing the quieter game, Desi and Chanel get the nod because they're just as competitive. That's fair. With all of this being said, uh, we get through the, the, oh, no, 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 wait, I apologize. I want to hear your take on this because with the Cassidy and, and, and Michaela, you had said something about it earlier. I just can't remember exactly what it was, but it was really good. No. Okay. So from this, we go into eliminations. Um, and no idea. I saw the face and I was like, let's keep it pushing. Yeah. Sorry. I, no, 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 no. I, this is what happens when we, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> the, the <Zaza. laughs> that's a, that's a anyways, we're going to the elimination. Another riveting name, barrel tag. <laughs> it sounds like something you do in Lord of the Rings movie. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> The votes that come in. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Before we get into this, there was a real quick scene where it was they, the three girls we were talking about, Desi, Chanel, Michaela, they brought uh, Michelle in and said, we're all going to vote. Make it a girl's day. Plus we want Chris, you to, yeah. Plus Chris, we want you to vote Tori. And Michelle's like, yeah, of course, of course. 
she doesn't do it because the, when the votes come out, Tori gets three votes instead of the four that she should have gotten. Chanel gets one. Chanel gets one, which is the one from Michelle. Yep. And then six go to Chris. Yeah. And it's like. But I do want to say really quick, and I am not excusing Michelle going yeah. back on her word because I was really freaking stupid. And she is in a position in this game where I think shit can still bite her in the ass, even though we're close to the end, because she doesn't have the protection and the no. alliances that yeah. like Tori and the side. Either, so, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think this can still come back to bite her in the ass. But I will say that I actually do agree with her because when she switched her vote in the nomination in the little sh- the little bloom shooty thing for mm-hmm. the hopper. She says, what's the point of being done with it? Talking about the girls' eliminations. What's the point of being done with it if it's not done properly? So, you know, obviously, if they're making it a girls' day, they're forcing Tori to go in against Cassidy, and the chances that Tori is going to beat Cassidy are very high. So I don't necessarily, like, I think it was a really smart move, not excusing her, you know, going against what she said to the other girls, but... I think it was a hell of a lot smarter than actually voting Tory in. Well, yeah. And Monday morning quarterbacking it, seeing what the elimination was, Cassie would have never beat Tory no. in this. No, Tory would have ate her it, up. Like, Cassie would have put her put an effort, but she just doesn't have the upper body strength to that Tori move has. those barrels. Because <clears throat> yeah. you saw how wore out Chris started getting towards the end and Tyler. Yeah. And, and those guys are in pretty good shape. You know what and I mean? And that was only over like four minutes exactly yeah. <laughs> like could you imagine having to do that for five to ten minutes oh my god your your legs and arms are shaking so yeah. no way <laughs> anyways yeah and i think michelle is just on the bottom of the totem pole in both sides like they trust her but they don't trust her and she just reinforces that it's like the kyle of the women is yeah. kind of what i like and that's i think that's why i'm digging michelle she's like the kyle yeah. of the women yeah great for confessionals exactly really great one-liners you yeah. cannot be trusted in your alliance no. at, at all. If she <laughs> if she steps up the dailies, like actually puts some like one hundred percent effort instead of just bunny hopping off of a platform and not grabbing <laughs> a baton. Thank you. You're welcome. It was a stick. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, if she does that, like she's uh, legit, Kyle, because Kyle will win a daily or two a season, yes. and I think Michelle has the the capabilities of doing that. In all honesty, I, I want to see that team of chaos. Like yes. they should have a season. They should have a season of just mismatched teams. You, <laughs> yeah, that would you be play funny. this way. You're playing with that person. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Like Kara and like Nelson. That would be a great one. Oh my God. Oh my God. Shout out to Nelson, by the way, if you yes. guys haven't seen the stories, if, if you haven't go yeah. watch them, go send them a message. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, always anyway. man. Yeah. Send them um, out. Yeah. Much love and prayers. Um, all right, so let's get into this elimination. Yeah. Because TJ goes and does the dramatic pull the ball out of the tube and goes, Cassidy. You are a commercial break. Not playing tonight. <laughs> yeah, not playing. Go rejoin the squad. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, <laughs> Thanks, man. Steve. Chris again, dude. Yeah. Like, I, at that point, I just felt bad. I'm like, dude, come on. And you could see it on his face where he's like, can I get one fucking week? Yeah, just one yeah. week off. Yeah. Just- just give me a break, a, a break of that Kit Kat bar, something. <laughs> Fuck. Hey, but I mean, look at it though. It's given us stuff like Horacio. It it's is giving yes. us it really old is. school West vibes on a season where Wes is there. He's well, scaring was. everybody. Yeah. Was, yeah. Was. He was on my fantasy team. Too. I, I don't want to talk about it because I missed last week, but whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it, like I said earlier, it's a gift because it makes us like him even more, at least for us. Yeah. Um, but Who's so since there's not a whole lot to talk about about the actual elimination, I'm curious what you guys thought about the differing strategies. So, you know, Chris had the strategy where he raced over to, you know, the the other set of barrels on the other side of the arena so that he could throw them at Tyler and block his way. Um, Whereas Tyler's strategy was just kind of to keep moving and have bigger gaps. Obviously, we know that, you know, Chris won in the end, um, but I'm curious, like, what you guys thought of the different strategies that these guys used. So I put a lot of thought in this in the last four hours since we did our rewatch. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are the one that's not it, the one being chased, you're the runner. You're the runner. 
what you do is you wait to watch what they're doing. And when they get to that middle point and whichever way they decide to go at that middle point, you start going the opposite way to those barrels on the side. Right. And then yep. you try to block them and then you try to get to the middle point and then play keep away. Yeah. That is the ideal strategy, I believe, as the runner. That's kind of what I was thinking was like play keep away around that big center like square, square thing yeah, that they had. You yeah. can keep some distance and it keeps them from being able to do that jump that we both saw them do. Right. Um yeah. as the chaser, haul ass. Yeah. Like <laughs> what else can you really do? You're you're chasing down a rabbit. You know what I mean? You <laughs> yeah. gotta follow. They they also the chasers had the disadvantage too. Yeah. Because I don't know if you guys saw, but anybody who was the runner, they had a larger circumference like on the top there was the stand that they had on top of their barrel but then the person who was chasing didn't have that mm. initially i thought that it was just chris had them and tyler didn't i was like that's weird but then the next round it clicked they switched that. yeah but yeah absolutely the easiest thing that you can do is wait for that other person to get halfway around and even then if you're looking at where it's a timed event that's your best option but it's your best option if you're Tyler, because he went second, because if you do it first, then the next person is just logically going to do that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It was like perfect setup for Tyler to do it. And then yeah. all you have to do is survive longer than, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, that they tagged you, you know, so. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's close. So it is close. It's close. It was like, a 32 second, diff 32 second difference between Chris's time and Tyler's time. And I appreciate that even though they didn't give us the timer, they told us their times. The final. Yeah. As long as yeah. you tell me their times, I'm good with it. I feel you know, yeah, I feel it, good it, about it satisfies my need. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what it was 122 to 153 was, or something like that. One 120 to 152. Yes, 120 Sorry. to 152. So yeah. 22 seconds. Stats and info. Thank you. 32. Um, I mean, 32, 32, but that's okay. 32. Sorry. Well, look, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a question for you guys. What's that? Where does Chris rank as far as rookie seasons now? Do we have to redo our best rookie seasons <laughs> of all time now? No. Do we really have to update uh, it? No. I don't, I, don't, I don't know about that. I, like, I would really love if he won a daily you yeah. know, like that would be, I, I feel like just to kind of stack on that resume. He was in blue. No, I, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not like on a but, team like that, but I mean, like if he got an individual win on top of all these eliminations, like I really feel like that would just like super solidify it. Like, but, but it's an impeccable rookie season so far, other than that he hasn't won any dailies. But here's my theme in three seasons from now, let's say he does three more seasons and we look at his dailies. We're not going to be like, Oh, those two dailies were from a team, so they don't I know, count. But, but you They're also, still going to count. When you're going to talk about best rookie seasons, you have to consider a whole lot more than just eliminations. You have to consider social game, which he hasn't had that great of a social game. You have to consider, you know what I mean? Like, there's, it's not just how many eliminations. Now, saying that, he's had, it, like I said, an impeccable rookie season. And yeah. I think that there's a lot of promise in Chris, and I would love to see him come to the flagship and become like a mainstay. You know what I mean? I would love to continue seeing him grow in the show and in the game. And I think he has a lot of potential. I, I, I don't know. Like I'm looking at this as would he overtake Orasio as the best rookie season? And in my opinion, no, not at this point, but like, would he maybe overtake like a third or fourth place position? Maybe. I don't know. I don't even fully remember our list to be honest. All right, so, <laughs> well, it was before Horacio when we made the list, but secondly, well, okay, well, <laughs> secondly, I'm also thinking I'm I'm looking into the future, right? Because we only have one more male elimination before the final. Yeah, and He'll let's say be he, in it. and if he <laughs> is in it, let's say he wins. Yeah, and yep. then he makes the final with five eliminations. That's on par with Horacio. It's not like Horacio's social game was phenomenal. He went into the elimination five times as a rookie. He got helped by the whole house to actually win a couple of eliminations. But the house, the house actually liked Orasio. Like yeah, exactly. Majority of the house hasn't liked well, Nobody half likes the, Chris. Half the house now <laughs> likes Chris, the survivor half. Well, I, I understand that. Half. Yeah. But, but I'm just saying. Well, and here's my thing. So if he gets to the final and he places, let's say he places second. Mm -hmm. To me, that ranks higher than Orasio. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and yeah, that's the I thing. Mean, it depends on if he makes it to the final, you know, like you're yeah. just you're bringing up the, the topic uh, sitting, of putting him on the 
four, right? Right now that that made him four eliminations. Four and zero, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the other thing too is like, yes, he hasn't been able to find an alliance that's kept him out of elimination, but that means that he's consistently played from the bottom, mm-hmm. which you also have to take into consideration too, because he's able to keep scrambling and keep winning anytime that he does see the elimination floor. And and look, it's not like. I get the daily thing, but it's not like he's not putting in a shit ton of effort on this daily to not win. You know, he got yeah. fucking he got fucking gamed jumped. up on. Yeah, he got jumped in the oil. <laughs> it, was like a, it was like a fucking manslaughter in I Italy know. with all that olive oil. Jeez. Anyways, <laughs> that's pretty much the episode we get the, yeah. to be on next, which we get the scene where it looks like this might blow up in Michaela's face because Tori's like, let's talk about who's voting for me. <laughs> and that's, I, that's what I appreciate about Tori. She says yeah. it with her chest and she'll confront something. It also looked you know? like yeah. we might potentially be getting like a mini final or something like just the couple yeah. of scenes that they showed yeah. of the daily yeah. next week. I was like, is there going to be a mini final? Maybe a purge. We get to see we get to see Michelle be a little bit messy, which I've been waiting for all yes, season. Like we need some it, messy. And Michaela call her out on it in the middle of M- Michelle trying to prove a point. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be. It's glorious. gonna be glorious. It's gonna be great. Oh. I'm very excited for that. <laughs> I'm just gonna be there with my fucking popcorn. Like, what in the haberdashery is going on? You know what I mean? Look, I've been listening to a lot of Tony Baker lately, and yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Haberdashery and skibbity, skibbity paps. paps. I'm going to yeah. get you with these fresh skibbity paps. <laughs> <Sorry. Nice. laughs> Anyways, um, who's your uh, who's your I was going to say, yeah, yeah go let's ahead. do line of the night and MVPs. Um, my line of the night is is Tori's clam chop. That's, Ditto. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Easy. I don't even think I need to say any more than that. Cl- Tori's clam chop. That was the f- that shit had me yeah. fucking rolling are last we, night. Are we all on the court on that one? I'm going to go with Desi for her line about Cassidy where she's just like, she's right there. I'm going to wrestle her. OK, I respect that. Yeah, because that's that's a solid runner up for me because it was one of my favorite moments of the daily. Yeah. Um, and then my MVP is Chris. And Chris is freaking awesome. Freaking awesome. And he's impressing the hell out of me. So major props to Chris. And then for my female MVP, I'm going to give it to Michaela for getting her second uh, daily win and attempt and putting forth a good attempt to make what she wanted happen in the elimination. Obviously, it, it kind of backfired on her a little bit. But and it, it didn't go yeah. not that it backfired, but it just didn't go down the way that she had wanted it to it fizzled. But, you yeah. know, she's she's playing a really good game as far as like the dailies and you know she's making she's making moves she's making alliances she's thinking ahead and trying to plan for the future so um, major props to her for for how she's playing so chris and michaela for me so as much as i want to give it to chris i'm going to give it to Corey for winning the daily um taking on fessy when he was gassed his first daily of the season on the best daily of the season to me um, so I'm going to give it to Chris or to Corey, but Chris is my runner up. It's like a one, a one B. I was going to say, maybe I might, you might've just changed my mind. Honestly, I might have to go Corey Michaela with honorable mention to Chris just for, cause he's kicking ass in these eliminations. Yeah. It's hard not to like shout no, him I, out. You've got him. I've got Corey. We're good. All right, cool. I'm <laughs> saying Michaela too. Uh, you know, there's, there's no girl showing yeah. out like Michaela right now. The only one that had any type of showing was Desi in her confessionals this week. Well, actually, I'll give an honorable mention to Chanel for that fucking body. Yeah, throw, that's that true. That shit was Facts. Facts. <laughs> I was like, damn. Who you got, uh, Tony? <laughs> Shocking. I've got Michaela for the women and then co-male MVPs of Corey and Underwood. The Michaela that we're, we've been seeing all season is the Michaela, the Michaela that I've been repping since we found out that she was going to be on the challenge at all. So it's nice that like she's able to give the showing that she wants and she's been killing it. I mean, she's won 50% of the individual dailies. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's her and Tori. It's it, yeah. like if the final started to me, they're who's first and who's second. You yeah. know what I mean? Exactly. Um, so no, I can't argue that. Desi's going to beat you up. <laughs> is she, uh, I'm just going off what's saying right now, not who's my favorite. You yeah. know what I mean? Josh, who do you got for uh, MVPs? 
to Corey because you know he he took on everybody. He at least yeah. touched everybody. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you know, we finally get a physical elimination. Like Fessel said, you know, I got this. I'm going to do it. And then Corey just ends up winning, and I loved every second of it. Yeah. Yes. It, you know, and Chris being thrown in there every single time, whether he's the house vote or the the deliberation vote, you know, you have to you have to at least give him a shout out. The guy is freaking killing it in that elimination. And then as much as I don't want to, I'm giving it to Michaela because there's nobody <laughs> playing like she is right now. Yeah. yeah. That's Whether facts. you like Look, it or not. And that's the thing. Like she might be overplaying her hand a little bit, mm-hmm. but it's entertaining to watch and she's doing a good job. So I can't hate on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, she she is right there. She is a great competitor. She can win dailies. She's she can be a team player for the most part. If I'm just saying, if I would change like one or two things about her, I'm a huge fan. There's nothing I can say about her. But you know, as being an OG fan and about playing for the future and stuff like that, that's my only downfall to her at this moment. Okay, so I want to ask one final question, and then we're we're at the end. And we can wrap it up. Is that fair? That's fine. Okay, so I want to know what your guys's pick for the finals are, or who's going to be in the finals like guys and girls mm. does anybody want to go first and you guys want me to go first because i've been put i've put some thought into this go for it okay so for the guys i feel like i feel like chris is gonna get in i just don't know who he's gonna be and i'm just gonna say it it's gonna be chris josh bananas Corey in a final for the women you think Fe- so you think Fessel's the guy that gets at home i think he goes against chris against something and chris gets him chris and he gets him his out. five and he gets to the final and he gets his revenge against yeah. Fessy. Ooh, what a yeah. great story. karma it happened it's, it's happened almost every season right. so i feel yeah. like it's going to play out with fessy the same way okay. um for the women i want to say michelle but i just the road to the final now after this move with desi chanel and michaela i just I think it fucked her. Yeah, she just blew up her whole freaking the whole road. She made inroads with Tori to burn the bridge with three people and the math ain't math. And no, exactly. <laughs> I just feel like I feel like it's going to like I think it's going to be the the alliance that was made with bananas there. I feel like it's yeah. going to be Tori, Chanel, Desi, Desi Michaela. They, like I, yeah. they just seem like the most obvious choice to me. Yeah, but that's me. I agree with you. Um, I the only thing that I disagree with, I, I don't know, man. I, I, it's not even that I disagree. I just don't know how I feel about the guys. But I do. I will say that I do agree with you that I do think that Chris actually makes it through, and I'm actually yeah. pulling for him. Yeah, me too, hundred um, percent. I I'm going back and forth on whether I think Josh or Fessel makes the final. I kind of like I'm leaning towards Fessel. And I, and I hate to say that because I want to, I want, like, I want Josh to make it there more than I want Fessel to make it there. But Fessel has just been performing better. And I feel like there's a higher chance that he's going to win the next daily. And you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it, it, that's the only thing there where I'm like, mm, I don't the know. The only reason I see, I feel like it's Chris that takes him out next week for some reason is because I feel like he gets voted down as the, the winner's vote. And he goes, you guys don't want to go against Fe- Fessel. I do. Put him in. I'll take him out. Just like he did with Wes. I mean, that's or does possible. does he do it for bananas? Yeah. If they were smart, they would throw bananas in. Yeah, if they were smart. But I, the bananas. numbers aren't there. There's too much love with Tori, with fucking Josh, with, um, you know, even Fessel. I don't think. Well, no, Fessel would throw bananas. Well, Fessel, would throw bananas. Fessel and Corey have already voted against him. Yeah. yeah. But Bananas and Chris seemed okay, too. And it's not like Bananas yeah. has done anything to Chris thus far. Yeah, but far. If, it's, if it's Chris or Bananas, Chris is voting Bananas. Yeah. Yeah. I um, mean... <laughs> But if it's not it's, like he ha- he has clean gameplay, we we yeah. saw. <laughs> and honestly, if I was Chris, I would much rather go against bananas than Fessel in an elimination. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Agreed. Um, I mean, really, the guys is a lot closer race, just because of how everything has fallen. The guys' competition is really steep, and that's not to discredit the women. But if you're looking at performance, I don't think Michelle's making the final. Yeah, I don't necessarily count Cassidy out, though, because she's won a couple eliminations, not necessarily that she's won the daily, but it's a coin flip as to whether or not she gets an elimination that's 
in her wheelhouse. If it's a so, puzzle, who knows? I mean, yeah, yeah, like I don't think that Cassidy is going to make the final. I won't be upset if she does. And I'm not 100 percent sure that I'm right, because I could see her getting another elimination win. I could possibly see her taking Chanel's place because um, I could I could see that showdown of Chanel and Cassidy going down to elimination, but I could see Cassidy maybe getting that one. As for guys, I'm with you. I'm going to say Fessel doesn't make it, mm. but it's mostly because I really, really, really want Josh to make it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I want to see Corey in the final and yes. I want to see Underwood. Like that's where I'm torn. I want this to be Corey's season. I want this to be the season that Corey gets his dude, win. Hundred percent. But I can't help root for Underwood. Yeah. Because exactly. yeah, the Survivor, same. he had like he's been shit on in the Survivor community for a long time about his win, and then he comes into this house and immediately goes to the bottom and is basically reliving his Survivor season mm-hmm. yeah, in the challenge dude, house. Fuck, dude, it's rough. I want I want to see him get that win, but I also want to see Corey get that win. It's so here, Josh, real quick before you go, the way I look at it, honestly, there's not one person left in this house that I would be upset with if they made no. the nope. final. A hundred percent. I'm just giving my yeah. idea of what I think is going to happen. Yeah. And, and who knows? I could be completely wrong. We could lose bananas and Tori tomorrow next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who knows? Wouldn't that be a, a sight to see? Yeah, I would be upset because Tori's my my oh, yeah. one keeping me strong with my fantasy team, and I want to see her run the final. Yeah, I think she she's played a good season. She's done an elimination. You know, she's played the right game this season compared yes. to what we said in the World Championship. So yes. I want to see her make it major improvement. But yeah, anyways, Josh, who who what do you see happening? What are your finalists? Uh, the Secret Garden Alliance or whatever they call them themselves. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's Survivor Strong now. I see all five at well with Bananas, Tori. Oh yeah, and yeah, those yeah, three. Yeah. I see, I see those five going. Um, you know, I'm I'm rooting for Corey. And then when it comes to, I mean, Chris has got to go just because he deserves it. He actually, he's yeah. actually earned a spot in the final. Yeah, more than anyone. I give him that third spot, and then you know it's just a coin toss between <laughs> Josh and Fessel, but. I want Josh to go. I want Josh because he hasn't made a final. Yeah. I want to see him in the final so bad. The foreshadowing on this episode was all about Josh making the final. So I'm like, uh. It kind of makes you think he doesn't. <laughs> right. I don't That's want the that. Only thing. I so don't want I, I, that. I want him in the final. I want him all the way to the end saying he made it. He finished it. I'm official challenger, bitches. <laughs> I want him to <laughs> shut people up. I I'm a too. real boy. <laughs> <laughs> he did outlast him. He did. He did. He did. Yeah. It might not be a theme, but that's because Wes retired. So, yeah, I want to give that final spot to Josh over, over Fizzle. I like it. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see it. Look, my one fear is that the challenge screws the pooch in the final again. Yeah. That's yeah. my biggest fear. It's not the competitors. I'm happy with everyone who's getting there. Yeah. And, you know, knock on wood, I hope it doesn't happen. So agreed. Here's the thing, though. We could have not had tonight's elimination. Had 12 people left. And had TJ say we're doing the final now. I would have been completely fine with everybody that was left. At the start of this episode running the final. I feel that every single person there has earned their spot. First stage, two people are purged. Yep. Last two people on men, last two on the women. Yep. You're yeah. purged. And then we go the rest. I'd been okay with it too. I wouldn't yeah. have been mad. Yeah. And then it would have given us fucking two or three weeks till we had to recap 39. But no, we yeah. get a six day fucking window. Yeah. <laughs> which actually, speaking of which, since we're talking about this for all of you out there listening or watching or whatever you're doing, um, we are going to do a season 39 uh, cast breakdown and predictions and like all that stuff. Yep. Um, but our episodes, the week of the final of, um, USA two and the airing of 39 is going to be very messy. We are going to have like three or four episodes out, like back to back only with like a couple of days in between them. So it's going to be absolutely crazy. And And our cast breakdown is not going to be released on a regular day. Like it's going to come out on like a Thursday or a Friday or something like that. We're not even going to tell you. 
It's just going to drop. Just, yeah, just follow us on our uh, on IG or Facebook. We put yeah. all our updates there. Um, IG is the best place because sometimes I just put the updates in the stories and I don't know if they always transfer to Facebook, but subscribe to automatic downloads. Yeah. yeah. Or look, do that. Look, you know? I got this. You ready? Wherever you listen to your podcast, subscribe to us. Yeah. And then say yes to notifications and you'll get an alert saying, hey, Challenge Fandom Podcast just put out a Challengers Unplugged with CT. <laughs> you don't know what's going to pop up. You never know. It could just be a recap. We could have somebody on for us with the recap, which we're going to do for the final of this season. Yeah. And it's going to come out a little bit late. Like, it's going to come out like Wednesday, right before 39 airs, probably. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Because we guys. have to record it later because. He doesn't want to stay up till two in the morning. And we appreciate that. Thank you. It's not me. It's already three. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> thank you guys for listening so much. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you get the opportunity, give us a rating of five stars or whatever you think, what kind of value we bring to you. Look like just leave us a good rating. Come on. Yeah. Do us a solid. We're trying leave to do us a you good a rating. Solid. Subscribe. Make sure you yeah. guys go follow us on Instagram. Go follow us on, on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, drop a like and a comment down below. Um, you know, just show some love. Yeah. Show some love. <laughs> With that being said, we're going to show y'all some love. Um, because we love you guys so much for listening and tuning in. We really do appreciate it. So for myself, Ricky Hayes, myself, Ricky Hayes, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I got the intro done right, but I can't do the outro. Fuck. We're here forever. <laughs> We're stuck. Let us we out. Can't say bye. <laughs> oh, my God, Josh. <laughs> How do I get out of here? <laughs> oh, I'm stuck. It's, I'm in a digital prison like Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> Anyways, for myself, Ricky Hayes, my beautiful wife, Karina Hayes. Tony Stats and Info Lance, Josh motherfucking Chambers, and of course, Corey Viator, who can't be here. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Thank y'all. We love y'all. Be good to each other. Bye. See you later. Bye.